again, we bring you the thrilling adventures of the shadow, the hard and relentless fight of one man against the forces of evil. These dramatizations are designed to demonstrate forcibly to old and young alike that crime does not pay. Today you say, I'm investing in savings bonds. Join the payroll savings plan at work. And tomorrow you'll say, there's our dream home. All finished and right down to the last break. Yes, today, join the payroll savings plan at work to buy United States savings bonds. Whatever you want in the future, guarantee it now with savings bonds. Join the payroll savings plan where you work. Or, if you're self-employed, buy a bond a month at your bank. Don't delay. Your own future, your country's future can't wait. By United States Savings Bonds. And now, The Shadow. The Shadow, who aids the forces of law and order, is in reality Lamont Cranston, wealthy young man about town. Years ago in the Orient, Cranston learned a strange and mysterious secret. The hypnotic power to cloud men's minds so they cannot see him. Cranston's friend and companion, the lovely Margot Lane is the only person who knows to whom the voice of the invisible shadow belongs. Today's drama, Collectors of Death. Hidden in the wilds of the craggy palisades stands the turreted castle of the European refugee recluse, Herr Bruder. Here in solitude, he gloats over the priceless treasures he has smuggled out of Europe. Tonight, as Bruder finishes his dinner, a sudden mountain storm beats at the windows of the castle. You will have your coffee in the study, Herr Bruder? Ah, yeah, yeah, in the study. Herr Herr why are you not using my best china as I ordered? But we are, Buddha. You see the design? Uh, my eyes are weak. I cannot see even from clothes. But with my fingertips, I know this is not my best china. Why? But maybe the hair must be mistaken. We would not sell him with any but his best china. It is as you have ordered. Ah, uh, sure. You are sure, Amy? Of course, I would. Perhaps I've been too hasty, uh, too hasty. <laughs> come, come. I take my coffee in the study. Ah, a warm fire on a night like this. An easy chair and a glass of... Who, who has been in my study? Only Marie, when she came. Get, uh, get Marie in here quickly. Call her. Marie? Yes, Amy. Come into the study, Marie. Uh, I come. Uh, is uh, something wrong? Oh, Marie, my, my painting. Someone has, has been touching my paintings. I cannot see what has been done, but something has been changed. Perhaps when dusting the Marie moved. Uh, yes, yes, that's it, Habuda. When uh, dusting them, perhaps I move. Oh, no. My, my coal. Where is my coal? About the desk, Abu. Uh, on, on my Renoir. About the fireplace, as always. Oh, the fireplace. Oh, I must have been mistaken. These dim old eyes, they play me tricks. <laughs> it uh, distresses us, Abu, that you think you do not trust us. Nonsense, Amy. It is only you that I do trust, eh? <laughs> that, that is why I sent to the old country for you, to, to protect me from, from thieves who would rob me, steal my treasures. Thieves, suppose? Yeah, I Amy, mean, thieves, American thieves. Oh, oh you, you must help me, you and Marie. <laughs> you must keep them from robbing. Rest easy, Abuda. Marie and I will do everything to make sure you are not robbed by American people. And this lovely authentic. 
big bit of Limoges is worth ten times what I've bid. Won't somebody say twenty-five? Twenty-five? Margo, don't be silly. That's no more Limoges than I am Houdini. <laughs> Lamont, I just can't help myself at all. Is that all? I'm off at twenty-five, and it beats the great deal. Forty. Margo, you can buy those things by the case lot for that. <laughs> Silly Lamont, what would I do with a case of them? Fifty! I'm over fifty, it will make a seventy-five. Get hold of yourself, Margo, you can't do it. It would be wrong. Seventy-five! It's uh, going for seventy-five. Going? It's going once, going twice. Sold to the lady for seventy-five dollars. Will you step this way, please, please? Yes, of course. Well, here you go, lady. Beautiful thing if I do say so. Shall I have it wrapped? Well, Father, it'll be easier to dispose of if it isn't. Uh, very funny, very funny, I'm sure. Seventy-five even. Thank you. Here you are, miss. I'll take it, Margot. With any luck, I might drop it. Oh, stop stewing, Lamont. Just the same, I think we'd better get out of here before the fever comes on me again and I buy the Taj Mahal. Well, I must admit it's a pretty good imitation. Wait a minute. Take a look at this thing, Margot. I have. Seventy-five dollars worth. Margo, this is a real Limoges piece. It's worth ten times seventy-five dollars. That's impossible. Why, in these places, they miss... just the point. These places specialize in fakes and imitations, but this is the real article. How can it be? Well, I don't know. I do know this. A few weeks ago, I was reading about a very famous collection of antiques in Opie Dart. The Bruder Collection. And? I'm almost certain a piece like this was described in that article. Bruder, whatever his name is, probably decided to break up his collection or turn it into cash. And sell it for about one-tenth its value? Oh, no. Well, then what? Somebody else is liquidating his collection for him. You mean stealing it? I don't know yet. There are three well-known fences who specialize in antiques. One of them, a Mr. Otto, might be ambitious enough to want to buy the Bruder collection. <laughs> Large rewards if I bought you have Bruder's collection. The larger pieces, yes, I shall pay you well, my dear friend. But the larger pieces we dare not touch, Mr. Otto. It seems dangerous to pick up these small pieces. Knickknacks, my dear girl, knickknacks. How about the piece of Limoges that you and Amy sold at the auction? Why didn't you bring it here? You know about that? It's my business to know about everything, everything. I thought to get much money at the auction. So instead of bringing it here, you part with it for a paltry $50. And to me, to Mr. Otto, you bring this collection of junk. You're not very bright, sir. I told you, Amos, we should not be doing this. We will be caught. It is not worth it. Quiet, Marie. All right, Mr. Otto. We will take your offer this time. <laughs> yes, I knew that an intelligent pair of... Uh, Collector, such as you who would see it my way. <laughs> Here you are, my dear friend. The price agreed, I believe. Thank you. Come, Emil. The old man will be missing us. Au revoir, my dear friend. Au revoir. Look here. Look here. Right here, Mr. Otto. You heard, look here? Yeah. All of them. They must not be permitted to, uh, Change their minds. You understand? Yeah. There's a fortune in the Bruder collection, look here. A fortune. It would be short sighted to let them falter now. <laughs> Very short sighted. <laughs> Lamont, it's a perfectly respectable shop. That's right, Margo. Mr. Otto is known to be one of the most prominent antique dealers in town. Yes, but you said he was a receiver, a fence. I thought they operated in dark cellars and underworld dives. <laughs> You've been listening to too many radio shows. <laughs> Come on, Margo, let's go in. Ah, good day, sir. Good day, madam. How do you do? And uh, how can I be of service to you? Uh, we were interested in a gift. Uh, ours, perhaps? Ah, oh, yes. Yeah. Or perhaps a trinket, such as these. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm sorry, sir, that uh, new shipment is not uh, classified as yet. Oh. These are precious. Lamont, look at this material. I'm sorry, miss, I cannot Very possibly find workmanship. As a matter of fact, I just read about a medallion very much like this. Um, it was in the Bruder collection. Oh, that? The Bruder collection, yes, yeah, quite famous, of course. However, duplicates do show up sometimes. I'd like to...
to make you an offer. For uh, no, indeed, sir. I wouldn't think of selling it until I had uh, checked its authenticity. Now I am disappointed. We'll be back, Margot. After Mr. Otto has assorted this collection. Perhaps then, Mr. Otto? Of course. Of course. Good day, sir. Good day, madam. Good day, Mr. Otto. Lamont Cranston, you're up to something. What is it? Trying to find out what's going on. Margot, that medallion came from the Bruder collection. I'm positive of it. Well, certainly the man has the right to dispose of his collection if he sees fair. Yes, but Bruder never would. He's a fanatic on the subject of his collection. He guards it with his life. Margot. Yes? How would you like to pay a visit to Mr. Bruder himself? Have a little talk about his collection. <laughs> Now, it isn't worth the risk for the handful of pennies you Mr. Otto gives us. Marie, it's so easy. A few pieces every night. Soon we have enough to go back to the old I house. won't let you do it. I tell you already, the old man is beginning to wonder. Soon he start to check what then. Maybe just one more. A clean sweep. We take everything and leave. Good idea, <laughs> Who are you? Name's Luki. Came to keep you from making a mistake, a bad mistake. I don't understand. This Dorado sent me. He wants you to stay healthy. If you don't go through with your deal with him, you won't. We can't do it. The old man is suspicious now. You had a good idea, Emil. One big job. Clean it all up. But we do it tonight. No, tell him no, Emil. You talk loud, sister. This talk's louder. Put away that gun. We don't want trouble. Like I said, we do the job tonight. As soon as the old man's in bed, we go to work. Ah, ah, again it storms. This violence, this, this noise, it upsets me, Amy. Why don't you get some rest, Stumble? You look tired. Yeah, I'm tired. My milk. Now he has won my milk. Here it is, Abuda. Oh, good. Good. So I take it upstairs. Then I see. We help you to the stairs, Abuda. You need not help me up the stairs. I'm not that feeble yet. <laughs> good night, my dear friend. Good night, Abuda. Now, Amy, before that horrible man with the. Folks, now we go to work. Just wait. Suppose the old man comes down. In that case, I'll take care of him. You wouldn't. Start going. We'll take the pictures first. Keep it quiet. Come, Marie. We have no choice. I'll just sit over here and watch. The rest of your work, the sooner you'll be finished. <laughs> we'll kill him. He'll speak to him. Pleasure. That don't. This will. Don't talk so much, Marie. We must hurry. Hey, what was that? A car. Who is it? I don't know. Rid of whoever it is, fast. Yes, sir. Now, you stay here, Emil. Let Marie do it. Go on. I can't. Why have to you just persuade her? Go on. But... Well, all right. I go on. Oh, oh, you fool. Let go of my gun. I catch you by surprise. Now I have the gun. Marie, what are you doing? I'm finished. I turn him over to the police. Then I confess all. I'm sick of this thieving and lying. Look, sister. Give me back the gun. I'll forget what just happened. Stand back or I'll shoot. Give me that gun. I'll shoot, I said. I'm coming for you. Stay back. You think I'm fooling? Give me that gun. I warn you. I warn you. Marie. Marie. Someone has killed Marie. Turn to the shadow in just a minute. How does a child grow, mentally and morally, I mean? Does the child develop into the citizen the way the infant develops into the man just by the passage of time? Of course not. Or there would not be so many faulty citizens. 
We all know that, of course. Yet I wonder how many of us tend to take the line of least effort to let our children, like Topsy, just grow. Counting, perhaps, on the schools to teach our youngsters love for their country and that essential element of good citizenship, good sportsmanship. Of course, the schools do a great deal, but they simply cannot do it alone. Rather, it is every parent's duty to teach his children what it means to be a good American. Not by preaching, for that is like water off the proverbial duck's back, but by precept, by example. After all, how can we expect to develop a new generation of unprejudiced Americans if we at home let them hear us falling into those same tired old errors of referring to any group of our fellow Americans as if they were all alike, all good, all bad, all smart, all stupid, or all anything. Yes, the teachings of our children is a mighty task, made simple by just being good citizens of ourselves. And now, the shadow. Lamont Cranston and Margot Lane are on the trail of a gang dealing in stolen art treasures. They pay a visit at the castle-like home of an eccentric refugee collector. As they try to get in the front door, there's a shot from within the house. What was that? Pistol shot. Can't waste a minute, Margaret. We've got to get in there fast. Come on. Please. What happened? Please, something terrible has happened. What went on in here? My wife. Someone shot. Someone has broken oh, my wife. Lamont, look. Yes, I see. Right through the heart. Who did this? My wife and I were... We were going to the door to answer your knocking when the shot came out of nowhere. Look, Lamont, the study. Thieves. Someone was ransacking the study. You must have heard you in the corridor, but why should they shoot? Harry! What... What is happening? I, I have a shot. It is Marie, her brother. She has been shot. Marie? Oh, poor Marie. Who did this burglar? Yes, thieves, her brother. Oh, my treasures. They, they brought my treasures. Oh, they were interrupted. Nothing is gone. Oh, oh, good, good. Uh, these people, who are they? My name is Cranston. This is Miss Lane. We came out here to see if we could help you. Uh, we have need of help. Emil, Emil, there's nothing missing. You are sure? Yes, her brother. Good, good. I was afraid. Oh, oh, oh. I, I must, I must go rest. This excitement. Before you go, Mr. Bruder, were you alone upstairs? Uh, yeah, why? Because it seems quite obvious that the bullet that killed Marie was fired from above. The line oh. of the bullet is down. Oh, I, uh, I, I do not understand. I, I saw no one. They may have escaped while my hair was arising. Caputo's eyes are not very good, Mr. Cranston. I... I must get to bed. I, I, I cannot stand this excitement. Could I help you, Mr. Bruder? Better let Emil do that, Margot. I think you and I should attend to notifying the police. Come now, Bruder. I will be right down, Mr. Craig. What do you think, Emma? I think the shadow had better have a talk with Emil when he comes down, Margot. I want you to make certain Mr. Bruder doesn't leave his room. <laughs> Sit, Emil. <laughs> Who said that? Don't bother looking around. I'm here at your elbow, but you cannot see me. No one sees the shadow, Emil. <laughs> shadow? What do you want? Who killed your wife, Emil? I don't know. I heard the shot. I saw her fall. It must have been the thief. Perhaps this thief exists only in your mind. No, no, you must believe me. I saw him. He had the gun. Oh, so you saw the burglar, Emil. Yes, he was named Luki. He wanted us to help him steal the paintings. Marie would not. And so this Luki killed her? I don't know. Marie took his gun. She was going to turn him over to the police. Suddenly there was a shot. Who fired it? Who is upstairs in here? I don't know. Tell me, who? There was no one upstairs. But her boulder. All right, Emil. I'll look further. In the meantime, I'll lock you in your room. Because if you've lied, I want you to be here to answer to the shadow. <laughs> These huge, weird cellars under the house, what do you suppose they were used for, Lamont? Storage. 
If he's wild, the owners probably had to store enough food for a whole winter in the old days. I still don't see what we're doing down here. Looking for some evidence of the man Luke gave it. And Neil swears held a gun on him and Marie. He may be gone by now. I do think so. You're sure the old man can't get out of his room? Positive. Here's the only key to his room. It's about a hundred foot drop from the window right over a cliff. Good. Well, I don't see anything down here. Hey, wait a minute. Turn that flash down. Here. Oh, what do you see? Here, a set of footprints in the dust. Leading this way. But where do they go? They stop right at this wall. chamber built under the houses in the old days, usually with a hidden door. Stand back, Margot. Come on, look! Good Lord! Is he dead, Lamont? Yes, Margot, he's dead. Who is it? Lamont, who is it? Mr. Bruder. Bruder? But it can't be. I just left him. He was locked in his room. It's Bruder, all right. There's no doubt in the world about it. Lamont, it can't be. Easy, Margo. What is it? Margo, I want you to go upstairs to one of the guest rooms, lock yourself in, and don't come out for anybody until I call you. You think I'm in danger? I think that the man behind this won't hesitate a moment to commit another murder. And I don't want you to be the victim. But I tell you, it is dangerous for us to be back in this. The man no one can see. I'm here. getting out, and I'm taking as much of this as I can with me. Stop talking and pack. It's the invisible man. If he comes back and finds you, he'll let me out of my room. I have been having bad dreams. There's no such thing as a man you can't see. He talked to me. I swear it. I... Listen. For instance, stolen. I'll be behind a drink. One word out of the way and you get it. You understand? I, I, I understand. Hello, Emil. Well, what's this? I... I thought the best, Mr. Kenton, to pack up the treasure. I told you the police don't like things touched. I but cannot help it. My first concern must be for her boulders. Suppose I were to tell you that Herr Bruder is dead. Dead? Her boulder dead? And they killed him. Mr. Kenton. Yes? Quick, a man with a gun behind the girl. <laughs> Emil, your next cover. That's what you think. Let go of my arm. Not that gun. Let go of <laughs> It gave you the fabulous collection at a ridiculous price, and it gave you two ready-made... 
great fall guys for the thievery. Very well. Everything you say is true. <laughs> I am Mr. Otto. But you won't live to tell the story to anyone. I'll see to that. You're counting on your bodyguard, Lukey. 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 Where is he? In the study, securely tied up with the police. I'm getting out. Don't try to stop me. Shadow, he's getting away. He won't get very far. Listen. <laughs> Mr. Otto walked right into the hands of a welcoming committee from the police. <laughs> Aren't you were right. Lukey has confessed his part in the plot and has turned state's evidence. Well, even without his evidence, police has enough to put an end to Mr. Otto's unsavory career, Margot. It was Mr. Otto then who killed Marie? Yes, Margot. He was standing at the head of the stairs. He saw she'd gotten Lukey's gun, was ready to tell the police everything. So he shot him. That Mr. Otto got an awful shock after killing Bruder to have the two servants walk in. Yes, Margot, but he gave him an idea idea that was to result in two more murders and a one-way no-return trip for him. Is this a question you've been wanting to ask about heart disease? Are any heart diseases curable? Part of the answer is yes. There are certain types of heart disease which can be cured through surgery, others through drugs. But there is still much to be learned about heart diseases and the causes of rheumatic fever, high blood pressure, and hardening of the arteries. That's why the American Heart Association needs your help now to carry on urgently needed research and educational programs that will help combat this great enemy to our public health. For in spite of medical progress, heart diseases still take one American life Every minute. Give and give generously to your local heart association or to the American Heart Association, Box 550, New York City. Once again, the shadow. This story is copyrighted by Street and Smith Publications, Incorporated. All names and places are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Listen again next week, same time, same station, when the shadow will again demonstrate that... The weed of crime.